Can Nathan do any better? He got a top three placing yesterday with his main course. But when he served up his unusual sea buckthorn curd meringue in the regional heats, it divided opinions. Marcus, have you come across sea buckthorn yet? Blank expression on your face. Yeah, no. It's going to be the hot new ingredient. It's a, got a very, very distinctive, very powerful flavour. I think they should leave it on the bush, frankly. <laughs> I mean, it's just completely overpowered the dish. There was a few comments about it being a bit strong with the sea buckthorn and being a bit sweet. So what I've done is I made it less sweet and I made it less strong in the sea buckthorn. Maybe a risk, but I really like it and I believe in it. Nathan's done a great job with his sourcing, including the wholemeal flour for his shortbread, which comes from the mill on his historic estate. But it's the quirky juice made out of the sea buckthorn berries that's causing a fuss in the kitchen. There's a faint odour in the kitchen. That'll be the odour of my uh, sea buckthorn. Yeah, have a, have a smell of it, John. Quite strong, isn't it? Yeah. And Alan's not afraid to cause even more of a stink about Nathan's dessert. I've never smelled anything quite like that that should be in a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seriously cooking with this? Yeah. Not been done before. Do you think there might be a reason for that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all joking about the acquired taste of the sea buckthorn, but I think I wouldn't be cooking something if it didn't taste nice, would I? It's a competition, and I want it to get through. Last time, Nathan served his dessert with meringue, but today he's doing something different. So you've changed it to marshmallow this time? At this point of the week, I didn't want to be stressing out. I just kept it simple and got a nice marshmallow, nice curd, yeah. let the flavours speak for themselves. They'll certainly speak something. As Nathan cracks on with the final components for his dish, it seems Alan finally has something nice to say about his cooking. Do you get anything in that shortbread, Nathan? Yeah, I've got the um, wholemeal flour from my estate. If it's as good as your bread was the other day, I thought it was a travesty that that dish didn't make a top three. How nice is that? I still think your seaweed's are terrible. It's not the berry, it's not weed. With the sea buckthorn berry blocks of curd now ready, Nathan starts to plate up his dish. First, the sea buckthorn syrup, then the blocks of curd and shortbread, a crumble mix, marshmallow, vanilla yogurt sauce, and finally, yogurt sorbet. Okay, straight in front of my lap. I think sea buckthorn will be something maybe Prince Charles has never had before. Can't see him going around the countryside foraging berries, but yeah, if he did get there, he maybe he'd enjoy it. That's not the same dish at all, is it? I thought he said he'd just tinkered with it. <laughs> the buckthorn's there. The buckthorn is Where there. Where is the buckthorn? Sorry. This is it here. I think the, the uh, sauce. The meringue's still there, but it, I think he's turned it into marshmallow because it's almost uncooked, I think. It's technically uh, quite an interesting dish, but it's a dish. You know, I mean, what is this? It's I not... absolutely agree with you. I think there's no point in this. Mm. I'm struggling to find out where he's going with it and what it mm. is, sort of what it represents. I mean, this is pretentious and pointless. The best part of this, for me, is the biscuit. Biscuit's nice. Which is brilliant. I actually really love sea buckthorn. Although it grows around our shores, we've never used it before, it has the passion fruit quality. But it's ours, you know, it doesn't grow down sure. in the tropics. Sure. For me, there's a thoroughly nasty taste I, as I, it goes down. I don't think Nathan who can be too happy with that. I think he's done it once for you, he's listened to your comments, he's dressed it in a different format. I don't think for one minute he's in the back there thinking, I've just served a number one dessert. Matthew, I know you think sea buckthorn is the next big thing, but let me absolutely assure you, this is not the vehicle to bring sea buckthorn to as, the masses. As the chef, no, I can guarantee you that sea buckthorn will not be you are the, the ingredient of the future. You are the sort of person who would have said when the tomato arrived from the, from the <laughs> new world, you said, oh, tomatoes, they'll never get anywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Tomato? I don't like the sea yeah. sure. It's not made cup of tea. I don't like that. That is a weird taste. The sea buckthorn kills it for me. I totally agree there. It's just so overpowering. Yeah. To put that in front of 100 people, how many people are going to have the same reaction as we've just had? <laughs>
I have mixed feelings about this pudding, you know, because I do actually think he changed and made a bit of an effort to look pretty and everything else, but, you know, C. Buckthorn is not going to save this sinking ship. <laughs> Five. I thought that was actually quite a natty dessert, but uh, sadly for me, I don't think he had a real sense of style, so it's going to be a six. There's some things in about it I didn't quite get. It's a shame because I was expecting big things out of the flavours and the ideas that was there. So for that, I'm going to give it a five. You know, the first time we tasted this dish, I thought it was the most revolting pudding I've ever eaten in my entire <laughs> life. When we got it this time, it tasted just as awful. The meringue was just as raw. The buckthorn was just as unpleasant. So I'm giving it a four. So Nathan's quirky dessert failed to set the judges on fire.